Here is an illustration from Hartmann Schedel's 1493 Nuremberg Chronicle illustrating deliberate destruction of literature by the Christian Church. A lacuna is a gap in an ancient manuscript. It may be a missing fragment, missing pages or missing volumes. They are, of course, very common. Prior to the invention of the printing press in the Western world by Johannes Gutenberg in 1440 in Mainz, what is now in modern Germany, books were made by hand copying mainly in monastic scriptoria. Pages were made from organic material and had a limited life due to use and the European climate. Papyrus in particular would only last a century or so in the European climate, and ancient papyrus manuscripts that have survived are restricted to those that were preserved in arid areas. In Europe, parchment made from animal skin was the principal material used, and ancient works that have reached us at least largely intact from Europe were transmitted on parchment. Works that were not in general use for prolonged periods tended not to be copied widely, and therefore preservation was haphazard. Throughout the period of historicist hegemony, the process of preserving and copying manuscripts was largely controlled by the church, and this means that the only manuscripts to survive reliably were those where the church or its agents felt the cost of preservation was justified. This has two consequences. One is that any work that no one saw as being valuable enough to copy was liable to be degraded by time and eventually lost in full or in part. Another is that works of esoteric interest were likely to have been preserved as only one or very few copies. That in turn means that any changes to such manuscripts made during copying would likely go unchallenged, as later scholars would not have been able to check them against other copies. This means that while it's no doubt true that there were organised efforts by the church to determine what documents were preserved, it is also true that many losses and changes to documents could have resulted from neglect and from the actions of individual scribes. This brings us to the question of suspicious lacunae. Those cases where parts of works are missing and the fact that they're missing suggests either that what they contained was of no interest to the church or that they contradicted church positions and so were deliberately deleted. The mythicist position is that some of these examples indicate that passages that would have been expected to refer to an early Jesus have not survived and therefore presumably did not refer to Jesus. Of course many if not most ancient works have random bits missing but there are some cases where the missing sections do seem rather convenient. One example is in the annals of Tacitus. St Jerome, who was the son of Eusebius and died in 420 AD, mentions 30 volumes of the combined histories and annals of Tacitus. Of these, less than half survive. The annals probably originally extended to 16 volumes, of which 1 to 6 and 11 to 16 survive, though 5, 6, 11 and 16 only in part in Volume 5, there is a gap spanning the period between mid-year 29 AD and mid-year 31. This probably amounts to around 80% of the volume. Scholar Robert Drews considers the most likely explanation to be that this passage was deleted by Christian copyists. It was widely believed amongst early Christians that the year 30 was the year of Jesus' ministry and death, and presumably this passage made no mention of either Jesus or any of the events surrounding him, such as the sun being darkened, etc. This conclusion is made more credible by the fact that the Testimonium Tacitum, seen in my video on Pliny and Tacitus, mentions the author of the name of Christians without any indication that Tacitus had dealt with the subject earlier in his annals. Another example concerns Cassius Dio's Roman history. Dio lived from 155 to 235 AD. He was a Roman consul and historian who wrote a history of Rome in 80 volumes. In Book 55, most of 5 BC, all of 4 BC, all of 3 BC and much of 2 BC are missing. Could this not be because some Christian scribe was embarrassed by the lack of any commentary on the events surrounding Jesus' birth? Dio's entry on the year 30 AD appears to be intact, but there is a reference in Book 58, Chapter 17 to something he mentions earlier which is no longer there. This occurred somewhere between 15 and 30 AD and may have been a deletion from the year 30. Furthermore, Philo of Alexandria's volume concerning Pilate in Judea is missing. Hippolytus was a Christian who lived in Rome from 172 to 235 AD. He wrote a ten-volume work, Refutation of All Heresies. Two of the ten volumes are missing. One of the missing volumes describes mystery religions that were competing with Christianity at the time. 
These may have contained many mythical motifs that were paralleled within Christianity. Perhaps then it's rather convenient that it was missing? There are several other examples of this type. It may well be true that these and similar things were deliberately deleted from the historical record by Christians, either because they contain no reference to Jesus or Christians when it was felt that they should have, or because they contained something that undermined Christianity. So it is put by mythicists that this argument from suspicious lacunae argues against a historical Jesus. The problem is the same problem as affects the argument from the silence of history. That is, that whatever was deleted for whatever motives, at issue was triumphal historicity, not minimal. The deleted section from Dio's Roman history, for example, is within a decade that is quite lightly covered, with only about 700 words per year for the entire Roman Empire. No one, then or now, would have expected these historians to mention an obscure preacher without a dangerously large following during his lifetime. If these passages were deliberately deleted, it was because they didn't mention dramatic, memorable events such as the star in the east, the sun being darkened, or the massacre of the innocents. Neither mythicists nor minimal historicists believe that any of these events happened. This argument is put forward by mythicists, but it is really a version of the straw man argument that we have already rejected. So does this argument carry any traction for mythicism versus minimal historicity? Personally, I don't think so.